Hello guys, welcome back to Sisters Talk TV. This is going to be another Basketball Wise review. I hope you got a chance to listen to that unedited recording of Kristen and OG talk that was not fully aired on the show, which was very, very disappointing because it could have made for a better topic and a better discussion for both Kristen and OG and also the fans as well. I shouldn't even call them fans, the viewers. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the review. So last week's review was actually not posted just because there was not really a lot of things that were going on. It's still kind of the same back and forth that was pretty much going on in episode one. But we did get to see um, Malaysia and Malaysia um, talking to her kids about police brutality and you know sharing the story about her brother who was still under the hands of um, policemen so we got to see kind of that topic going on which was kind of really sad to hear Malaysia having to have that talk with her kids it was really really sad to see but I'm glad she did have a talk so they will kind of know you know what to do when they are approached by a police officer all right so This episode begins, the ladies, of course, they go to their mansion, and you have, we have two houses. Um, The first house is with the collectives, and that includes Evelyn, Malaysia, Kristen, Shawnee, and Liza. The second house, which is Jackie's house, that includes Jen, Jackie, and OG. So, these ladies, or this group, they are separated in two houses, um... Yeah, so far that is how it's going to be. So next episode, the house that includes Jackie and OG and Jennifer, they're going to have new guests. So that's really, really exciting to kind of see that, you know, it's just not going to be three of them in that big house. Okay, so this episode centers around colorism. They talk about colorism throughout the episode. Okay. So the collectives believe that OG is the one that is bringing up the whole colorism issue. While she is not the one that's bringing up the whole colorism issue, they are. are, They are the one that's asking, have you talked to her? Or Jackie is the one that's asking Johnny. Have you had a conversation with OG? Have you talked to OG? OG even mentions that the producers are the one that are asking her, what how do you feel about this how do you feel about this whole colorism issue so og is not the one that's bringing it up so jackie goes over to the collective's house and she wants to you know just kind of have a conversation with them and especially see where their heads are at especially concerning og and jennifer um evelyn mentions that she and og they are in the civil like they're currently like in a lawsuit so she's um, filing a lawsuit, um, a lawsuit against OG because OG is calling her a racist and also a colorist and she starts to cry and say that OG posted a picture of her grandfather um, saying that you know Evelyn is not um, is not um, Afro Latina as she's claiming so she's making that comparison and me and myself and I I actually did see the post that OG posted and it was not the way that Evelyn is interpreted interpreting it was not how OG put it out there OG was just comparing how you see like she was just kind of comparing like the lineage of Evelyn as far as like her grandfather and to show that Evelyn is actually not Um, Afro-Latina she's not Evelyn has only started claiming Afro-Latina when the claims of her being a racist and colorist started in the beginning of Basketball Wives Evelyn has always claimed she's a Latina and all this stuff she's never claimed Afro-Latina until recently when it benefits her and then she starts to cry and say that you know um, OG is taking something so detrimental and making it into like you know like a storyline while OG is not once again making it into a storyline these ladies fail to understand what is actually going on and they fail to understand they fail to accept or even have this conversation with OG Evelyn you have not learned anything since 
the first season of Basketball Wives. You have not changed. You continue to cry and, you know, play victim and all this stuff. And these ladies are falling for it. But us, the viewers, we are not. And it's, it's kind of annoying and it's kind of tiring. So, one, okay, so we go back to the conversation where Evelyn and, sorry, Jackie and Shawnee. And she's asking Shawnee, hey, do you want to have a conversation with um, um, OG? Are you willing? She said, yes, she's willing to have a conversation with OG only if, I guess, depending on how the conversation goes. And she mentions that she is guilty of playing favoritism when it comes to Evelyn because Evelyn is her friend. Then why are you the executive producer of this show if you're going to play favoritism towards another castmate. Why are you the executive producer? It doesn't make sense. And also, why are you even a cast member? That does not make sense at all. Like, if you're gonna play um, favoritism and all this stuff, why are you there? Why? Like, honestly, guys, it's so, watching this episode, it's just so annoying because you have all of these ladies that they're just not, understanding the point or getting the point you know they feel that they're all, all of a sudden playing victim which is really really annoying so then um um as on as um shawnee is talking she some semi starts to like thin the case evelyn you see evelyn's tears start to dry up and she's smiling because she feels like yeah like you know she has the group by her side and you know every like Old, make it seem like OG is lying or OG is just problematic. No, Evelyn, you are the one that is problematic. So anyways, Kristen says that she wants to have a conversation with OG because her and OG are the same skin color. So she just wants to see like where OG's um, headspace is as far as this whole colorism. Thing, and she just wants to have a conversation with her. You can kind of see Evelyn start to get upset because she's like, oh my gosh, Kristen, you want to have a conversation with OG? It's like she does not want anybody to have a conversation with OG, to talk to OG. She doesn't want anyone to pretty much, quote unquote, be on OG's side. So high school, ugh. Okay, so Jackie also mentions Jennifer's name and she says that Jennifer is just not, she just doesn't care. And Jack, Jennifer has told Jack, do not mention her name when it comes to these ladies. But I also feel that Jennifer kind of wants to be back with the collectives. Like, she wants to have her name mentioned. She wants to, um, Shawnee and Evelyn to forgive her so she can just be back with the collective. So, um, also Malaysia, when Jackie comes, Malaysia hides and she just does not want to see Jackie. This is once again carrying another storyline, just Jackie and Malaysia. I honestly think that they are going to be back friends or buddies. So Malaysia's doing, I mean, I understand because Jack, Jackie was not being a good friend to Malaysia when she repeated what someone else said about Malaysia's children, which I definitely understand Malaysia's take when it comes to Jackie. Okay, so, OG and Kristen, okay, so Kristen comes to the other house and she wants to have a conversation with OG. And this conversation did not go as intended because um, Kristen came in. I feel that Kristen wanted to just get camera time and she didn't really fully want to really understand OG's perspective when it came to this matter and how like her feelings are when it comes to this because she's already, her alliance is already with the collectives. So she's not gonna say anything that goes against the collective. And Kristen, she has had a whole year to really reflect on this issue during quarantine, during the whole um, um, police brutality and also during the whole march and protest. Kristen has had a whole year to really reflect, reflect on what is actually going on with the colorism um, issue that the colorism issue and um, issue that's going on with the cast. She's had a whole year. This is not something that OG has to educate her about. Kristen can actually just pick up a book. She, ha you know, she Kristen is college educated. She can just pick up a book and read like what is colorism, what is futurism, what is racism, and she keeps using racism, which is the incorrect. I mean, 
Kristen is not, she's not using colorism, she's using racism, which is the, actually the incorrect term. So I don't understand why Kristen is using racism as opposed to colorism. I don't really understand. But Kristen has had a whole year to kind of reflect on this and before she's had that conversation with OG. So this is not something, and I, <clears throat> sorry guys, I agree with OG. This is not something she has to educate her about. Absolutely not. OG should not have to educate a 30 year old and 40 year old woman about colorism. This is something that Kristen, she should have been more educated about, Google whatsoever, and then sit down with OG and had a proper conversation with OG. Like, that is where my sense when it comes to Kristen. So, the audio was so chopped up during this episode. I highly recommend going to OG's page and listening to the unedited audio. OG is so eloquently spoken. And I feel like that is why these ladies really have a hard, a hard time with her. Because how um, well spoken she is, how educated she is, how confident she is, how beautiful she is and everything else when it comes to OG. They, they, they know that if they have a conversation with OG, they won't look as eloquently spoken as OG is. And that's, I feel like that's, what, that's where Shawnee's insecurity comes from. It's because of how educated, eloquently spoken OG is. And that's why she just does not want to have a conversation with OG because she knows that when it comes, when they have the conversation, OG is most likely going to dominate her and have better speak, better speaking points in that conversation. So that is what that's Shawnee's insecurity. And I feel like that's also Evelyn's insecurity as well. So, um, Kristen, um, she's like, you know, well, what does she do? And OG lists like, you know, I mean, it wasn't really like what she did. It's like how she took a part of the issue and making her feel the way that she feels and there was us other behind the scene stuff that happened as well that og lists out but i just re really recommend just listening to that conversation um these ladies have been guilty of also ageism and also um i'm gonna say racism as well too because um in cc's first season evelyn called her ling ling and you guys know that is like the equivalent of Calling an Asian person Ling Ling is the equivalent of a, a white person calling a black person the N word. So that is no excuse. And that is also a form of racism as well too. Evelyn used an ape emoji to describe OG and she claims that it is um, the first thing that pops up when like a laughing emoji, the first, the ape emoji is the first thing that pops up when you forget or whatever. And I actually went on the, um, like the gift um gift website and i typed in laughing emoji the ape emoji was not the first thing that popped up evelyn is lying she wanted to use that to describe og because she believes that that's how she sees og so she is absolutely lying on the episode and i'm so disappointed with the producers that they will allow evelyn to they're like everything they're editing the show in sides with Shawnee and the collective. I mean, which makes sense because Shawnee is the executive producer and she should not be the executive producer if she's going to show favoritism and she's just going to be one-sided. So yeah. And another reason why I feel like Kristen did not genuinely come to really listen to OG is because she goes back, back and tells the collective everything that OG said, how, oh my gosh, the conversation went so wrong and all this stuff. And that's why I'm just like, okay, Kristen is just not, um, she's just not being genuine. And then they laugh about the topic. I'm just like, see, you guys are the problem. Y'all are the problem. You see, you guys in Malaysia, I don't even want to talk about the whole, you know, Malaysia, you should be the most understanding because you've had to talk to your children about police brutality. All this stuff that OG is talking about is a product or stems from racism and also colorism is you know they're they all fall under the same umbrella black people being targeted this all stems from the same umbrella so you've had to have this conversation a political you know uh, um a serious conversation with your children so i would feel like you should be the most understanding instead you sit there and you laugh with evelyn with shawnee 
and with um, all these other ladies. You know, like you should be the most understanding. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much how the episode ended. Uh, no, like no lessons were learned. Nobody took accountability. Um, Jennifer still feels like, you know, she still kind of feels like she does not um, want to talk to the ladies. But Jennifer wants to be friends with Shawnee and Evelyn. She wants to be in a good standing with the collective you know she's ready to turn on jackie and og at any minute as soon as shawnee and um shawnee and um evelyn accepts her so she is ready and which is really really sad that jennifer is scooping to that level in order for her to be back with the collective it's like she does not have a mind of her own and I'm really excited to see like a new dynamic, new energy once the new ladies come on the show. So I'm really, really excited for that. Um, what else? Okay, so yeah, the ladies, they laugh. And some behind the scenes comments for um, when it comes to Cece and Roy. So they actually left a comment um, on OG's page where she, you know, revealed the recording. And both lady, ladies have talked about their traumatic experience when it comes to the show. Roy says that she just has, she, she's been, you know, trying to overcome the experiences that she had while she was on the show. Um, but, you know, listening to this, watching this made her re, um, relive a lot of the experiences that she had which is really sad and she also mentions that you know the show does not want to take accountability for nothing nothing that they do other shows like the bachelor they are you know want to move fix things want to move things in a different direction but basketball wives they are not they they're pretty much making this such a serious topic an object of caricature you know and which is really sad to hear and really sad to see and i'm gonna post um a screenshot of royce and cc's comment to og and i really appreciate how a lot of black women are really 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 um you know standing up or standing for og which is really really um i i love to see that and i think that before og released the unedited version Evelyn, she was all over. She was um, gavelling all over social media, like feeling like she was vindicated, making it seem like OG was crazy because of how the editing was. So I'm so glad that OG did post the unedited, um, unedited conversation between her and Kristen because now the collectors are all quiet and they're all mute. It's just like, okay, yeah. Um. Okay. So another thing I need to mention is. Although I do see a lot of, you know, black women really standing with OG, but I also see a lot of people, um, especially some reviewers on this platform, really fight, like really, really um, just disheartening what the things that they have to say when it comes to OG, especially when it concerns her futures. And it, it, it just amazes me because it's like, you know that you share the same futures as OG. So what does that say about you? And what does that, what, so, so is that what you think about your friends? And is that what you think about the people that you are associated with? And that's, is that what you think about um, yourself as well too? So you, you're initially, intentionally calling yourself unattractive, you know? So it's, it's really, really sickening to see because this is like, you know, it, it makes you it makes you really think about who people's views on the show and how they think about you, you know, or what they what they see in you or um, how they see you as a friend. So you guys, you know, watch these reviewers, you know, watch these reviewers, see what they have to say and really think about, you know, is this person your friend? Is this what they're thinking? So really pay attention to that. So that is going to be the end of this review. Thank you guys so much. So please be sure to like and subscribe to 
this video and also to our channel. It really helps us out. Thank you guys so much. Peace, love, and blessings.